So I'm a rheumatologist and, and I'm an immunologist. Um, I'm from Connecticut and we're working at Yale, so we're just one and a half hours by train away and trying to persuade you that maybe you want to in get involved in some of our basic science studies with patients with lupus and antiphospholipid syndrome. All right, so I get started right away. Um, lupus is a very complex disease like any autoimmune disease and um, uh, generally speaking, genes are very important, but also immune dysregulation and the environment um, as a whole. I should mention that all the environmental factors that need to get through the body go either through the gut or the skin or the mucous membranes, and we think that the microbes that live in, in us, in the gut, may have an important role in, um, in the development of lupus. In fact, we are walking culture dishes. Um, this is just a slide showing the different parts of the gut, from the stomach down to the lower parts of the intestine. And these are all numbers it's just showing how many bacteria we actually harbor uh, throughout our gut. And it turns out um, these bacteria are not only good for metabolism, which means they digest your diet and you know, they make vitamins, but they also have immune functions, interestingly. Over the last few years, uh, several groups have shown that certain compounds in the gut produced by the bacteria can induce certain good uh, lympho immune cells or lymphocytes, thereby, thereby the smiley, but also bad lymphocytes, um, like the so-called Th17 cells. So just to illustrate, there's a, a profound effect of these microbes in your guts on immunity. Now, we think that uh, not only the gut, but what we call the barrier organs, which is uh, also the lungs and the skin, they're, they're really important to understand how uh, immune-mediated diseases evolve because, as mentioned, uh, there's not only the genes that matter that um, define all the different aspects of the immune system and the barriers, but also the environmental factors that go through the skin, the lungs, or the gut, that they may be influencing the microbes that also define our immune systems. Uh, the focus of my lab are the microbes and the gut, and um, they may be or may not be related. There's a lot of research going on right now with the rapid rise of immune-mediated diseases, including lupus. Uh, that's uh, usually known as the hygiene hypothesis. So I go right to lupus now. So lupus is very complex, as you all know. There are many different phenotypes, as we say. Some patients have more kidney disease. Others have more brain problems. Many patients have arthritis. Others have blood problems. And one uh, aspect of lupus is also the antiphospholipid syndrome, where antiphospholipid antibodies are formed, and they lead to clotting. And, and women also, they can lead to miscarriages. And these antibodies have long known to be induced transiently by infections. So we speculated that perhaps instead of an infection, someone who has chronically these antibodies, that there are microbes in your gut that could drive those. So what is the antiphospholipid syndrome? Perhaps some of you have this. Unfortunately, it's, um, oh, it's cut off here, but it is um, an autoimmune clotting disorder where patients event essentially get clotting due to the immune abnormalities. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, so patients can develop uh, deep vein thromboses, uh, strokes, uh, heart attacks, and in women, miscarriages, as mentioned. And the, um, the problem is due to um, the um, immune system overreacting against a, um, a clotting protein called beta-2 glycoprotein 1. The pathogenesis is fairly well understood, but the cause of um, antiphospholipid syndrome is not known. Just a brief cartoon, um, the immune cells produce these antibodies to beta-2 glycoprotein 1. That's the only name maybe to remember. And then they, they bind uh, on the surface of platelets and also endothelial cells. It's just magnified here and cause a cascade of inflammation that then leads to thrombosis or fetal death. Now, the treatment, unfortunately, is archaic. We um, give patients blood thinners. And often they are unfortunately not enough, and um, also inhibiting the platelets is not working well. And a recent trial uh, trying to deplete the B cells was also not too efficacious. So we think there may be some chronic trigger, and I want to show you some early unpublished data that is funded by the Lupus Research Institute um, that we think microbiota, these microbes in your gut, at least in an animal model, drive the syndrome. So we have this mouse model where these mice develop heart attacks, lung clots, and, and strokes, just like some patients. Um, and they also develop lupus, but they die from these clotting problems. And remarkably, when we remove all microbes in the gut of these animals, uh, we essentially have no disease anymore. We really prevented them from dying. 
And that's the survival curve. So um, uh, telling the postdoc in the last, Silvio made these uh, studies. Um, these mice that uh, are not treated with antibiotics, they, they, most of them die within several weeks from clotting. Uh, while interestingly, uh, just one single antibiotic, vancomycin or another antibiotic, ampicillin, which uh, especially vancomycin, only acts in the gut on those microbes, it completely prevented the disease uh, to occur. And it also reduced the so-called bad antibodies, the autoantibodies against this beta-2 glycoprotein-1. I'll just go quickly through this, but essentially across time, as these mice age and get higher and higher titers of these bad antibodies, uh, these antibiotics could prevent uh, the formation of them. And what we are currently doing, this is work in progress, we looked at the microbes in the gut uh, of, of, of co colonies of mice from uh, mice that were treated with these different antibiotics. And the goal is to culture them and put them into other mice that don't have any microbes. They're so-called germ-free mice. And that's uh, all in progress, but we're trying to identify which are the key bad microbes that may be driving these antibodies in, in these mice. We also study patients. This is not part of the LRI-funded research, but an NIH-funded R01 project. But uh, just to let you know, we are very interested in, in also patient samples. And we, we asked uh, the question, could um, these autoantibodies against this uh, clotting protein also occur in the stool? So we looked for fecal autoantibodies. And indeed, um, a graduate student in the lab, Bill Ruff, he was able to show that there is formation of antibodies even in the stool, again, making the link closer between the gut and the systemic autoimmune disease. And we also have a technology that we adapted from a colleague of us at Yale where you can look if uh, these antibodies, not the same, but uh, antibodies in general, are coding certain bacteria in the gut. And then we're trying to make the link. And I'll stop here. All I'm saying is we have a big uh, research agenda also on the patients with antiphospholipid syndrome and lupus. The challenge in human patients is that the microbiome is really what we call microbiome, the gut microbes that live in you. They're really very variable, and that's best illustrated in newborns. When you look at a baby from uh, born, the day they're born to about two years, one investigator studied almost every other day the, the mi microbes in the gut of these babies. And interestingly, as you can see here, for instance, when they went from breastfeeding to formula diet, you can see by the different color, the different colors just show you the different microbes, there's a profound change. So of course, these studies in humans are hard to do because we need to know your diet, we need to know your medications, and how they could influence um, your microbes. I think this is also an opportunity because we think that certain diets may actually be maybe helping your lupus. This is speculation, but we think that these microbes from one state can go into another state uh, depending on how we influence them with diet. So one aspect of the LRI-funded research is to also look if diet can alter uh, lupus. And, um, the, the hypothesis is that the usual diet, again in animals, uh, the mouse diet that our mice get, may drive these bad microbes that produce these bad lymphocytes producing bad antibodies that then leads to heart attacks, stroke, strokes, and lungs, lung clots. And we are testing certain diets and speculate that this may lead to abrogation of this um, cascade. And just to show you one very uh, early data, this is not from the model I showed you earlier, but we also have a model where the mice uh, die from lupus, and we indeed, with a certain starch diet, which was done by Martina, an Italian in the lab, um, could really prevent, uh, to some degree, uh, quite significantly, the mortality from lupus. And this is, is really early work, so don't change your diets. This is all still very early, but we are excited about that. We're looking at the microbes now in those mice, and in the different groups, as you see by the different colors, before we start the new diet, they're all very similar. And then, just very quickly, i show you how the over time, how the diets, there are three different diets, how they change the composition of those microbes in the gut. And I'll, I'll, I'll stop here just to summarize. We're trying to find certain influences on the microbes in the gut, like the diet, and you'll hear later a talk from another uh, outstanding investigator who's looking at the hormones and how they influence the microbes, and that this uh, changes the balance between bad and good microbes, and that in the end, if you have also the wrong genes, may influence if you get a disease or not. And I'm listed here in a review we recently wrote just the most obvious diseases that are likely driven by those microbes, and these are those where the microbes live on. For instance, in the gut, where a lot of microbes are, inflammatory bowel disease we think is occurring this way. Psoriasis, a skin autoimmune disease, may be involved uh, by this pathway. And then we're speculating on lung disease as well. But I hope to have shown you some early data that we think that lupus and antiphospholipid syndrome may also be influenced by your microbes. 
So in summary, I've told you uh, we are walking culture dishes. Um, gut microbes affect various immune functions. Um, antiphospholipid syndrome is a clotting uh, autoimmune disorder associated frequently with lupus. Um, APS is prevented with certain antibiotics, at least in the animal model. And lupus is mitigated with a diet that changes the microbiome. And lastly, and most importantly, I want to thank the members of my team. I, I named everyone as I went along. Um, if you want to hear more about our research, we have a little YouTube video. If you go to Kriegel Autoimmunity on YouTube. But more importantly, I want to point out we, we're doing some very early basic microbiome studies in patients with antiphospholipid syndrome and lupus. And uh, if you're interested, and I know it's Connecticut and not New York, but we have some patients from New York, um, let us know. We have two study coordinators working on that. And we also have a collaborator in New York, Doruk Erkan, at the Hospital for Special Surgery. He's a pure clinician, but he sends us stool and blood samples from his patients to Yale. Um, with that, uh, I just want to thank again very much the Lupus Research Institute for funding us. And some work I showed you was funded by the National Institute of Health. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martin Kriegel.